Welcome everyone. Thanks for attending our webinar, Capacity Planning for Hyperbeam. Um, throughout the presentation, if you have any questions, please enter them in the chat window, uh, and we'll be sure to address them uh, time permitting at the end of the presentation. So with that, I'll pass the presentation off to Stephen Dwyer, who will uh, be giving us the presentation. Thanks, Rob. Well, the developers at Sufficient have been very busy for the past few months. They've been adding features to our existing products, and they've been developing brand new tools, including the one we're going to be looking at today, Capacity Planning and Management for Hyper-V. Now, the purpose of this tool is really to answer a number of questions for IT organizations. First off, am I making effective use of my Hyper-V resources, including memory, storage, and CPU? Second, when I'm going to have to make additional capital investments in my private cloud? And third, on an ongoing basis, what do I have to look into to make sure that my private cloud is healthy? So the first thing we did when we created the prototype for this tool was we turned it loose and looked at our own private cloud infrastructure. And the picture you see in front of us, in front of you right now, is what we saw. Here, each of the rectangles is one of our Hyper-V hosts. You can see we have one in Ottawa and four in our office in Utrecht. The small blue squares in each host are the virtual machines. What's interesting about this picture is, especially on the four machines in Utrecht, is we're using less than half of the capacity of each Hyper-V host. Now, this asks the question is, should we really have kept adding hosts? And the answer would have been, if we had this tool, clearly we would not have. We would have just kept filling up what we had already before we'd gone and made additional investments in new hosts. So without further ado, let's jump into a deep dive into this new product and see what it can do for you. We're going to start off in System Center Operations Manager. And the reason I want to start off here is to emphasize that even though we collect a lot of information about your Hyper-V hosts, we don't, rely, we don't require you to install new agents on your machines and we don't require a separate database installation. Instead, we leverage your existing investment in System Center Operations Manager. And of course, the way we do that is through a management pack. The management pack story for Hyper-V in Operations Manager is a little confusing. Uh, depending on what you want to monitor, you might need the failover cluster management pack. You might need the latest server OS management packs to monitor the cluster shared volumes. You may or may not need the Hyper-V management pack, and you may or may not need the VMM management pack. So in putting together our own solution, we've tried to simplify that for you a little bit. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at our data center, which, taking advantage of the good weather, we've put on at Stonehenge. It's actually a thinly built advertisement for our Live Maps product. Just had a new release of that that lets you have fully scannable, scrollable, zoomable maps of the world on which you can put your IT infrastructure. So we're just going to open up the cluster itself and look at the health state of that. Now I mentioned before that if you want to monitor a cluster, you're going to need the failover cluster management pack, and you're going to need the latest server OS management pack for the shared volumes. Unfortunately, even when you have both of those, they don't talk to one another the state of the shared volumes doesn't roll up into the state of the cluster. So one of the things we did a couple months ago, and if you follow along on our blog, you'll see we released a free management pack, was we put together a little management pack that lets you take those cluster shared volumes and put them directly into the health model of the cluster. So you can see here that under my cluster, I have the state of all of my cluster shared volumes. So if you then go and put this cluster on a live map on a distributed application, if something goes wrong with the volumes, it's going to roll up the cluster itself, and the appropriate team is going to be monitored and can take action. We've done the same sort of thing for the Hyper-V hosts themselves, where we've added additional monitoring. Now, some of this is going to overlap a little bit with what you can get with the VMM management pack, but not all of our, our customers use VMM or the VMM management pack, so we wanted to go to give, good, give good monitoring coverage for them. So the first monitor we're going to look at is the critical virtual machine count. 
from time to time, you're going to have a Hyper-V host that's going to take one of your virtual machines and throw it into the paused critical state. Usually, this is because of storage issues, but there can be other causes as well. Once your machine becomes paused critical, everything on it stops working, including the ops manager agent that's monitoring it. So you're not going to get notification that your workloads have stopped until your external monitoring kicks in. So what we've done and done is we've added a monitor at the host level to watch to see if you have any critical machines and to alert you appropriately. We've then gone and also added additional monitoring at the host level, level for the amount of time that the hypervisor is spending on the processor, any available memory. If your, ho if your virtual machines are exerting pressure on the dynamic memory, they can't be fulfilled. And if your VHDs are having any errors, we monitor the disk errors on the virtual storage devices. Besides just additional monitors, we've also thrown in some additional operational reports. This first one here is good if you have a self-service environment. If you have an organization where people can come in on their own and create new virtual machines. Often the case, in those situations, someone's going to create a virtual machine, they're going to run it for a while, and then they're never going to turn it off. So this operational report here will let you see the number of virtual machines and the growth in virtual machines, as well as the resources, including processor and memory, that they're taking up. We've also given you additional operational reports around dynamic memory and memory pressure exerted by the virtual machines. Reports on the processor usage. Reports on reads and writes to your virtual storage infrastructure. And finally, we talk a little bit about the throughput on the virtual switches. So these are just some of the additional operational reports that we throw into Hyper-V. We actually collect a lot more information about your Hyper-V host than we're showing here. And we use that to feed into our new product capacity planning and management. Now, again, I want to emphasize that this tool is really intended for all levels of an IT organization, all the way from the CIO down to an administrator who's doing daily tasks, such as tidying up virtual machines. And again, it answers questions like, are we making most effective use of our resources? When do we have to make new investments? And how do we keep our cloud healthy? Now, what do we report on? And if I can just draw your eye over to the left here, where we've got this little tree, we can report on individual Hyper-V hosts, or we can report on all of the Hyper-V hosts at once in your private cloud. We can also report on individual clusters and the members of those clusters. And then finally, we have something that we call a, web, a business service. If you run System Center Service Manager, you'll already be familiar with the concept of a business service. It's a collection of IT resources you've tasked for some specific purpose or group. Here we've taken the same idea into this product and imported those business services so that you can report on them by themselves and see how the different groups and business services are making use of the private cloud. And of course, you can look at the individual components of those business services as well. Let's just jump into our first report. This is a report that really looks at the overview of your private cloud. And we look at it as sort of a CIO high-level report. Uh, like all the reports in this product, we break it into three different areas, resources, memory, storage, and processor. For each resource type, we show you how much you've used, how much more you have available, and we also tell you how many more virtual machines you can support with that particular resource. As well, we look at what the trend has been in the past of adding more virtual machines and depleting that resource, and we tell you when it's going to be exhausted and when you should think about purchasing more hosts or putting more resources into your existing hosts. At the bottom here, we also duplicate the uh, business services that we saw in the tree. And we show what share of the resources that they're consuming. Uh, this isn't a full chargeback solution, but it does give you a good idea of how the different units within your organization are making use of your private cloud. 
Now again, we suggest this is a great report to use at budget time when you want to request additional funds to build out your private cloud. Usually, though, the response you're going to get when you ask for more money is, can you do more with what you already have? And for that, we will pro provide this optimized report. In the optimized report, we're going to identify areas where you're not making the most effective use of what you have. So for example, under memory, we show you the top idle virtual machines. These are virtual machines using dynamic memory and have a particular dynamic memory demand on average, where that demand is less than the minimum amount of memory that you've assigned to them. So if you're simply to go into Hyper-V or VMM and tweak the settings for this virtual machine, you could free up additional, um, sorry, additional memory. As well, we also show you, and I guess we don't have any at the moment, the top inactive virtual machines. These are virtual machines that have been powered off the longest. So perhaps they might not even be used anymore or desired in your environment. So for each of these, we're going to show you the amount of storage that you could reclaim if you were to delete the virtual machine. We also show you the top idle virtual machines by processor. And these, again, are virtual machines that aren't making very much use of the CPU, CPU, and they could be candidates to consolidate on other virtual machines. Or you might investigate and find that they're not being used at all, and they can be removed completely. In addition to idle resources, we also show you these stressed virtual machines, those demanding more dynamic memory than is than assigned to them as a maximum. We show you the cluster shared volumes that have the smallest amount of storage left, and we show you which hosts are making use of them. And we also show you the top virtual machines by CPU and the top hosts by CPU as well. And again, this report is an opportunity to balance the load in your private cloud to make sure that no host is doing more work than it has to, and there are none that are underutilized. And then to move virtual machines around as need be to make sure they all have the resources that they require. Once you've gone through an optimization loop, how do you make sure that on a daily basis your cloud remains balanced? Well, for that, we've given you the provision report. And we suggest this is a report you might want to use if you go and add new virtual machines. Again, for each resource, it shows you the available hosts and how much of that resource is available. In this case, how much memory, how much storage in the cluster shared volumes, how much processor. And we also tell you how many virtual machines, based on the profile of the current virtual machines, that you could fit onto that host. So that will give you an idea of which host you should be able to look at to place that new virtual machine. If you want to take a deep dive and look at the actual virtual machines themselves, we can click through right into our Hyper-V real-time dashboard. Here, right now, working at the storage page, we can see the layout of each cluster shared volume as well as the local storage on the machine. And we can see graphically the amount of space that each particular file used by a virtual machine is taking up. For example, this virtual machine right now has a number of files, including those used for snapshots and VHDs. And we can see where they are in our storage infrastructure, how much space there is, and so on. And we can see in this environment, too, people have a tendency to use volume three over the other volumes. You want to look at the virtual machines themselves. We also provide real-time performance metrics for those virtual machines. We can break things down into memory, processor, and so on, and show you every 15 seconds that we sample when you're running this tool to see how things are behaving right now. In addition to the real-time monitoring that we're doing when we bring up this dashboard, we also reach back into the Center Operations Manager and we pull out historical information so we can go back in time and we can see how that machine used to behave. So if you run into problems, you can bring up the real-time dashboard. You can see where things are going wrong and you can see them in the context of how it used to work. And then we can correlate those with any events that have been thrown by operations manager 
or here in the event log on the machine themselves, so you can see what might have changed. We do the same thing for the Hyper-V hosts as well. We have a whole bunch of metrics that you can monitor in real time on disk, network, processor, memory, and so on. And again, as well, we reach back in time and we pull historical information out of Operations Manager to show you the context. We will also flag any metrics that appear out of the spec that you might want to take additional look at. So really, we see this capacity planning and management product as a full circle health check of your private cloud. From our new UI, you can report on what's in your cloud, what you're going to need in the future, and you can make daily operational decisions. From System Center Operations Manager, you can monitor what's going on with our operational reports. We add new monitors so you can check the health. And if one of those monitors goes off indicating that something's wrong with your cloud, you can leap into our real-time performance dashboard to dig deep and see where the issue is so you can have a faster time to resolution. So I think that's the whirlwind tour through this new capacity planning and management tool. And we're happy to take any questions if you have them. I think I saw one fly by about System Center 2012. And yes, we do work with System Center 2012. Rob, do you want to bring up the Q&A? So Windows Server 2012, uh, we fully expect to be compliant with and work with Server 2012. We're just waiting for the uh, final release to manufacturing packages to do the checks on that. But if, uh, if we find it doesn't out of the gate, then we're certainly going to have a version out very shortly that'll, that'll work with that. We also, I mean, we've been doing this demo in System Center 2007. We also work with System Center 2012 as well. And a live maps product as well, which is released also is working in 2012. Okay, I guess that's the only question. I'll just turn it over to Rob if he wants to finish up then. Thanks for attending, everyone. Um, if you come up with any questions uh, after the fact that you'd like to follow up with, please send them to sales at division.com, um, and we'll be sure to reply to your questions uh, in that, uh, from that email address. Uh, otherwise, thanks for attending, and goodbye.